tour of the Doge's Palace and St. Mark's Basilica. Clint almost lost his. Oh. It was an epic save though. We just did like my number one bucket list thing. Guard, so guard, guard it your with your life. Deep, and then get out of there. Yeah. Today is our first full day in Venice and we started the morning off trying to go find some espresso and a little bit of breakfast before um, our tour this morning of St. Mark's Basilica and also the Doge's Palace. It's about a three, three and a half hour tour so we're really excited to start our day off with that. Yeah, that, that chocolate croissant was the fuel I needed to get going this morning um, and if St. Mark's Square and Venice looks a little bit more festive today. That is because today is actually Republic Day. I've never heard of that. Commemorates the institutional referendum, I'm cheating, held by universal suffrage in 1946 on June 2nd and 3rd. The Italians were called to the polls to decide the form of government following the Second World War and the fall of fascism. It was at this point that Italy became a republic and it is always celebrated on June 2nd. The largest celebration is of course in Rome, which we saw them setting up for. Yeah, it's so like a week before. I yeah. can only imagine uh, the excitement in Rome today. All right, so we just finished our tour of the Doge's Palace and St. Mark's Basilica. It was about a three hour tour. Three hour tour. A three hour tour. You definitely had to move along to get done in three hours, like yeah. our tour guide kept us on track. Um, but I really love the Doge's Palace, like it was just so interesting. I thought the different rooms and like just, it was just crazy to walk in and see like where senators and where people just, I don't know. It was like really it was, cool to hear him describe the Republic of Venice and how proud they were yeah. of their Republic as it, uh, the, the doge or the duke was more like a president than a king or a monarch. Um, I thought it was really interesting. All throughout the city, they have what is called, they have what's called mouth of the lion. And it, uh, there's these little holes in the walls throughout the city. And if you were a resident of Venice, basically it was the first complaint department <laughs> um, you could write a note if you knew somebody was doing something in the city or they were a traitor or you had something that you wanted to tell you could put it in the mouth of the lion and then the city officials would get that note on the back side to get the note there were two or three doors that uh, required different keys from different people so if Lauren and I were the two different people if the note was bad about me I couldn't get the note and throw it away. Lauren would have to also be there to get the note to make sure that um, there was there's... no like compromising of, yeah. of complaints. Yeah. <laughs> Another cool thing our guide told us, it's not really related to St. Mark's Basilica or Doge's Palace, Doge's Palace but one thing that um, he well, taught well, us. The, one thing, the first thing was is that I didn't know this, um, but when we started out, we were in San Marco Square, and he talked about there's a certain point where they basically covered the, um, they basically covered the uh, canal. Yes. And so that's why it's Where, big, it, that's why it can be as big as it is. But there's like a slight hump you can see, and when you're in San Marco Square, like it's so cool. And I never knew that like there's actually a canal under there, and they yeah. just they just covered it up so you could have this big square. Yeah. And then that led to him, him talking about, about the Moses project. The Let my people go. 
this project was started, I think I think they said it was commissioned back in like the mid 80s. Yeah, I think it took 36 it years to It was supposed to be complete originally in like 2011 maybe or 2016 and then 2018 and then they had a really bad flood in November of 2019. And, and so I think that's what Well, and apparently a part of the delay was some officials all the money that was going towards the project some of the officials were just pocketing that money yes, instead of putting it corruption. towards the project and then when they had the flood in 2019 uh, there was a huge push to get to this done and i think they had their first successful test in 2020 july of 2020 and i think it's near near absolute completion but after all of that we ran back to the airbnb so lauren could change in the shorts because you do have to wear pants and they are checking for shoulders to be covered um so you don't have to wear pants you just have to have your knees covered but, but lauren yes. did wear pants so yes. we changed and now it is time for lunch so we are going to go on a cicchetti tour throughout venice and just find all the cicchetti we can and I mean, probably some gelato, let's go. Yeah. Two hours later. We just finished our Chiquetti crawl. We hit up two spots for Chiquetti. I couldn't begin to even tell you what we had. You just kind of point and I want that, and that, you just, that. But you can never go wrong with anything fried. Yeah. They have a lot of fried things and I'm just like, and I could recognize like mozzarella or, you know, like you kind of have an idea, we, but. We tried to go safe with a few things and then we went a little adventurous yeah. as well. Um, but everything we had was really good. Yeah. Even, I don't know what it was. It was like a, almost like grits. Yeah. But it was it, really good. It was like olive oil grits. It yeah. was really good. Now, looking at the sun, looks like, yeah, it's gelato time. All right, we found gelato. Clint almost lost his. Oh. It was an epic save, though. It was halfway off. I mean, yeah, it was, it was off the cone. It was off the cone. No, I somehow he... got the cone back under it and saved it. <laughs> reflexes so it's, it's sometimes it's really difficult to have gelato a camera you're <laughs> getting your money out so like it was a hot mess for a second but yeah we're all good now we both got fruity tabasco but i got coconut and i got nutella and it's a warm day yeah it's hitting, hitting the, the spot yeah jeans buy me a coke oh snap man we're still saying the same thing this is amazing carrots Pumping nickels, glow stick, twist. Okay, Clint is going to now demonstrate the Venetian Google app map dance. So don't worry. If you get lost, you definitely won't be alone because there's plenty of tourists that are doing the exact same thing. So apparently Venice is known for their Aperol Spritz. And we finally found one that Lauren likes. We are at Bar Canyon. It's we came over here yesterday. We really enjoyed grabbing a table here yesterday. Their Aperol Spritz with Prosecco, so good and refreshing. And they serve potato chips with their drinks. There is a canal that runs right by this little square, so occasionally boats and gondolas go by. It's so quiet over here. It's very different than the hustle and bustle closer to the Rialto Bridge and San Marco Square. And I think this place is making a case to become one of my favorites in Venice. Okay, so we just got back to our hotel and we had to stop by the Il Tre Mercanti place that has the tiramisu that we had last night because it was so good. And they also make different flavors every day. Last night we just got the classic, both of us just to try it out. Um, but we knew we had to go back and they have 35 different flavors. Um, I think they kind of just rotate them because they only had, I believe, six different kinds today and then the classic. So, of course, we had to get enough for dessert tonight. And tomorrow 
and then it might be our breakfast before we leave. Look. So we just went to grab a quick dinner at Rastasiria Gislon. And it's a pretty quick service place and we had planned on having a pretty quick dinner tonight. We didn't have a reservation anywhere. No. And we had heard this place can be a pretty quick in and out, almost like self-service. Yeah, downstairs is all self-service and, and it's even a really good lunch spot. Yeah, um, and when we got there we had... Uh, we just decided we would go upstairs and check out the upstairs and we got up there and they literally were turning the lights on when we walked so it was up. Like the guy asked if he could help us, said we were just looking for a place to eat. And he said, Well have a seat. And we literally spent the first almost hour and a half up there just to ourselves. Yeah. We were yeah. the only ones up there. So. I can't say that that would always be the experience you would have. Yeah. Or that they would even let you do that. But they did let us, so the only difference is, is you, you get the same exact food, they just bring it to you. Yeah, I think there's maybe just like a, a Euro service yeah, charge or something, yeah. but I mean, other than that, it's great. Yeah, so we literally got to have a sit-down dinner all to ourselves, basically a private dinner, yeah. um, which was great, but it wasn't quite as quick as we had originally planned, but that's okay, because it was a, we had a great time. But now we're going to do something extra special. Ever since I've known Lauren, the one thing she's always said she wanted to do was ride a gondola in Venice. did like my number one bucket list thing that I have been waiting years to do. Uh, so this actually is kind of a, well to make a long story short, um, one of my favorite all time favorite movies is The Italian Job. And I know there's an older one, but I really love the one with Mark Wahlberg and Charlize Theron. I love, I just love that movie. I could watch it all the time. But anyways, ever since then, at the end, at the very last scene, Mark Wahlberg and Charlie's Throne are like in a gondola, just like going through Venice. And me? I took John Bridges' advice. I found somebody I want to spend the rest of my life with, and I'm going to hold on to her forever. And I'm like, that's it. That's that's the top. I don't I don't even know why, but ever since then, that's what I've wanted to do. And so for the last two and a half years, I, well, longer than that, but the last two and a half years, I have been patiently waiting. And we were going to save it for the last night, because this is, we, we have tonight and tomorrow night. But uh, because of the COVID testing and all that, I was just terrified that something could happen and I didn't want this to not happen. Um, because unfortunately we have had a, COVID test scare in the past, but that is a story for another day. <laughs> but anyway, so we went ahead and did it tonight. It's a beautiful night. It was literally perfect. It was so quiet. Um, and um, we actually got on like, I can't, it was not like two minutes from our hotel, but um, he was like, is it okay if we go to San Marco Square? Because I guess that's where he ends because it's 8.30 and I don't know what time they end. But anyways, so we were like, yeah, that's fine. And we literally went through the canals. It was so quiet the whole time. And then we got to go under the Bridge of Size, which was awesome. And then just basically yeah. end at San Marco Square. So I literally wasn't even expecting that to happen. And it, I couldn't have imagined it anywhere better. So if I give you one tip, if you want, and I know it's expensive, but one, do it at night, because I think it's just that much better. It's 20 more euros, but it's totally worth it. And then my second tip would be to just go somewhere quiet 
to at least get on the gondola and then, you know, wherever he takes you. But those are my two tips. It was everything. I'm now happy. We can go home now. But, uh, but yeah, it was wonderful. Well, it is our last day in Venice, and it's also her last day in Italy. It's terribly sad. Q Weezer. But we have a completely free day in Venice, and so we're just gonna kind of make the most of it and see where where Google Maps might take us, which will probably be to a dead end at some point today. But uh, yeah, we're excited to just kind of spend our last full day with no plans because we've had a lot of plans the last two weeks, which has been great. But I'm really excited to just kind of roam around and... See where Venice takes us yeah. and, and maybe eat my sadness away. We've used this morning to just kind of roam around Venice, uh, get lost a little bit. We got a little bit of rain earlier, um, so it was a good time to just kind of get lost. Yeah, so we just kind of walked around, went in different shops, and a lot of the places here have Murano glass, and they make little like animals or you know stuff like that. Clowns, people. Yeah, like uh, candy, Christmas stuff. Cups, um, pictures. Yeah, everything. everything. So we just kind of roamed around and looked in those shops and just kind of had like an easy morning. Yep. And now we're about to head to a spot. I believe it's one of the last remaining places here in Venice that still uh, makes or repairs gondolas. So interested to uh, check it out. Okay, so we're across the canal at uh, across from Squero de San Travasso, which is a 17th century landmark. And landmark boat yard. Yes, that builds traditional wooden gondolas in a cabin-like facility, which you can see the little cabin behind us. And it's directly across the street from this popular Chiquetti spot. Okay, so we stopped at Stereo Al Squero, which is a Chiquetti bar. Um, we got, I got three, I don't know what all we got. We got some takeaway uh, Aperol spritz with Prosecco, but we saw one seagull dive down and literally steal someone's Chiquetti, so we are guarding it uh, while we eat it. All right, so we're, we're getting out of there. The Chiquetti was really good. I think that was our favorite spot. Again, Osteria, Osquero. And it's now I see why all the seagulls are hanging out over here and trying to steal yeah, it. And they snatched it, one right from a girl's hand. Like oh it, she was just holding it. Like it yeah. wasn't like it was on a plate. Like she no. was about to eat it. And mine, mine. Mine. it dove down, took it, went over to <laughs> the, oh, went across the canal and just swallowed it whole. Yeah. So guard, so it, guard, guard your chiquetti. Your and then get out of there. Yeah. <laughs> we stopped for lunch at Bacci and Pasta, which is a Italian quick service or fast food type place. You literally go in, you pick your pasta or gnocchi, and then you pick your sauce. And that's it. Super easy, super <laughs> quick. Lauren and I both got the uh, Torto, tortelloni, tort tortellini, and with, pesto with ricotta and spinach, and then we got pesto sauce. And we I think we both knew we wanted pesto sauce. It just sounded refreshing. It's pretty hot and humid out today. And she recommended they have all they have a lot of different options of 
but She's it's, very it's not too overwhelming. But the staff was super nice, super helpful. Um, so if you're unsure, ask. They were uh, they were super great. And, and she would give good rec recommendations. Yes, yeah. and they have Wi-Fi. Oh wait, wait, just a sec. Okay, we'll be right there. Gelato's calling. We just got gelato at Gallon Gallonetto, um, which they are they are jamming in there. They have got the beats dropping. Um, and I have to give a plus for presentation because I got tiramisu on top, and they even put coffee dust. They have a chocolate dip cone with pistachios, chopped pistachios, and you can get your cone, you can get chocolate on the bottom of your cone, but the machine was down like McDonald's, but <laughs> they did have gelato, and I got pistachio and hazelnut and okiola, the traditional. And I got uh, strawberry and tiramisu. And they even sprinkle a little, the little cocoa dust yeah. on top. A plus presentation. Yeah. This will cool us off. So after gelato, we had a pit stop. More tiramisu. Now I think we're gonna head back to the Airbnb, cool off for a little bit. Pack. Yeah, we, uh, since we've gone city to city, our luggage has just been a big mess. And now we probably need to have a plan yeah. for what, how we're gonna get it all home and, or get all of our stuff home. So we're gonna take care of that. So we decided to spend our last dinner camera free. But before we pack up the camera, we are gonna sit down in our hotel lounge and recap our time here in Italy, the best food, activities, and tips, which will be our next video and end our time here in Italy. Bye, Dennis.